Hi, welcome back to another episode of The Edit Room. I'm John Ballou, and today I'm going to talk about getting the most from your UAV or drone footage using Funnel Cut Pro 10. I'm going to show you some retiming tricks. We're going to look at the benefits of using optical flow for slow motion effects. And I want to point out Alex 4D's Wide Angle Fix plugin, which is free, and his website. First, I want to say thank you to Chris Sherman for giving me this footage to use. Please check out his work at overaustin.com. So here we have a field of blue bonnets, the Texas State flower. And it looks like a beautiful day flying over some blue bonnets and then up and you, oop, there's the lake. Awesome. Well, let's make this shot a little bit cooler by slowing it down. I'm going to play it back again. And I want to just maybe play it normal up to that point, maybe a little further. I'm going to play it normal right about there, and then I want to slow it down at that point. So if I select the clip and I hit Command-R, I get the little retiming shelf. And I'll come over to the retiming button here, and I'll choose Blade Speed. And if I zoom into the timeline here, you can see there's... a uh, little cut right there in this retiming shelf. So this half of it I'll just slow it down and automatically you can see a little time change transition and you can actually extend this out by dragging the ends of it. And then if I come over here to this little black triangle I can choose custom and maybe 27 percent. So now it's going to play normal and then it's just going to ramp to that very slow slow-mo effect. So the thing about this is that it's basically slowed down so much that it looks like it's stuttering. And there's a way to fix that. With the clip selected, if I come over to the retiming button, I could go to video quality and choose either frame blending or optical flow. Now if you choose optical flow, it's going to actually generate frames in between the frames, making the footage look super smooth. Frame blending just basically blends the frames together, almost like a cross-dissolve transition between clips. And I have both of those already baked in, so I've already rendered this portion of it. This is the same clip, but this time I have the frame blending applied, and let me just play that back. And it is a cool effect, but it's not quite what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a very smooth um, look to this. Although this could be very creative, like maybe you're wanting to create a sense of urgency or panic. That's frame blending. Now this clip has optical flow applied to it. Look how nice and smooth that is. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, because it's creating frames between frames, let me just let this keep playing. Um, sometimes what you'll notice is that it's kind of morphing on the edges and the fringes. So if there's too much motion or there's not enough frame rate, like if you have a low frame rate, like this is 24 frames, then you're not going to get really great results. Although sometimes it can be a really creative result and some people like it. It just depends on what you're doing. But just keep an eye out for that little digital tear. But I absolutely love optical flow. Now, one more little trick here. This is another clip that Chris sent me. This time we have, I don't know, wildflowers of some sort. Um, but the problem with this clip is that the horizon is bending and it's due to the wide angle lens. So if I come to my filters tab, I've downloaded the Alex 40's wide angle fix. I'll just click and drag and put that on. And now you can see the horizon is a little bit more straight. And you can adjust this further in the inspector here. And this is off and on, off and on. And you can see it is kind of pushing into the frame a little bit and bending that up. And then of course you have some on-screen controls here which is basically the point at which you can choose custom 
and you see what it's doing here. So you can say that is where the horizon is and then adjust it as you want. Now one more thing about this clip is that it was shot at 29.97 frames per second whereas the 4K footage was shot at 23.98. My project just happens to be 23.98. So this clip actually has more frames in it than what set my timeline and Final Cut automatically adjusts to play it back as smooth as it can. Now if you, uh, in fact I think I already did the retiming. Yeah, it already, I retimed it down to 19% when I was messing with it earlier. So I'm just going to click that little black triangle and go back to normal. And then this is what it looks like. Okay, so at this point, if you have a higher frame rate than what your output is, or a high frame rate versus your project setting, maybe you have a really high frame rate of 120 frames per second, or what have you. So what you could do is come to the retiming button here and choose automatic speed. And it automatically slows it down to match the frame rate of the project. So that's why it's at 80% now. And so when I play it back, it's still nice and smooth. It's not giving me that stutter effect, but it is slowed down just enough for me to play it back and have a pretty smooth shot. That's all I have for you today. If you haven't subscribed, please do for more tips and tricks inside the edit room. I'm John Ballou. Thanks for watching.